Hi, welcome to Vibration Cinema, the alter destiny of film. Happy Valentine's Day to studs and studs only. And to celebrate this auspicious occasion, we are reviewing Stud Life by Campbell X. In the 90s, we obviously had Watermelon Woman as the quintessential black lesbian movie, but also movies like Set It Off. As we move into the aughts, Stranger Inside and Mississippi Dam sort of book in the decade, and there really isn't anything in between by way of narrative films that had circulation. There were a handful of documentaries like The Aggressives and Butch Mystique, but not much else. But then, in the early 2010s, we had a small boon of films about black lesbians. Pariah is the big one, Bessie comes to mind, Rafiki, the Kenyan film that sparked a movement of LGBT rights in the country, comes out in 2018, and of course, Stud Life in 2012. As importantly, in the online space, a bunch of web series and YouTube movies begin to crop up. Girls Just Don't Do That, New York Girls TV, and Between Women all have over a million views on YouTube. For me, Stud Life fits in that late aught indie feel of a Mississippi Damned and the emergent style of a black web series. But because the lesbian main character JJ, played brilliantly by Tania Miller, does direct address narration and is a wedding photographer, there are a lot of superficial comparisons to Watermelon Woman. And I get that feeling, it's not particularly hard to miss, but I think at the same time it overlooks a fundamental black and LGBT historical impulse of self-documentation. Cheryl's early work broadly does this, Marlon Riggs and Ella Maholi and Lynn Keller, the founder of the Bay Area Lesbian Archives, come to mind immediately. So that comparison to Watermelon Woman seems a bit short-sighted. It's also very easy to compare pair black lesbian films because so few penetrate popular consciousness and there's also a habit to Americanize black British culture and Campbell X teaches against that. And I would question why do we have to go to America to find out black queer history when we all have black queer history here and we can be doing biopics about um, black um, queer people here. I'm saying all this to say that the film comes from a particular place and time and fits comfortably in that niche. So it seems really weird that the modern response is so critical of the film's hokey sentimentality and rough-edged technique. There's a brand of online cinephilia that dismisses so-called poorly made films that appeal to its intended audience, especially if that audience is marginalized like black lesbians in this instance. Sorry to say, but the vast majority of people like things that speak to them and their experiences that tell a compelling, enjoyable story. Not everything has to have the polish of a carol or Handmaiden or the aesthetic daring of a Barbara Hammer or Chantel Ackerman. There's a reason why so many black LGBT web series are popular. It's not about the craft, but the relatability of the story and characters that's appealing, and Stud Life has that. A lot of people have come up to me to say, oh my god, that's my experience up there, which you just think, I just wrote this, I, I, you know, you never know who would relate to it, you know. And um, there have been studs, gay men, straight people who've actually related to the film. The film succeeds at what it sets out to do, and for that, it's well made. I think it's high praise that Campbell X has been getting his flowers over the past few years in the UK. Said life remains relevant and continues to be celebrated. That's a testament to how important and beloved it is. I don't see a point for me to harp on the technical deficiencies of the film, even though, you know, that's my favorite part. Instead, to meet the film where it is, I think the story is very rushed. I can only describe it as reportage. This happens, then this. There's no dramatic weight. Dramatic things happen, of course, the breakdown of a friendship, gay bashing, falling in and out of love, but it isn't dramatized. It's not a slice of life film, so it's kind of lame that the film expects you to just buy the story at face value with minimal effort on its own part to convince you that anything going on really matters. Through most of the movie, Seb avoids Smackjack's come-ons like the plague, but Smackjack happens to be there to take care of Seb after he's gay bashed, and this TLC is enough for Seb to fall madly in love with Smackjack. I hope if I'm gay bashed, there will be someone to take care of me just like that, but that doesn't automatically mean we're going to be romantically involved now. There's no follow-through in the movie, no development, but dramatically, Smackjack's successful insistence is used to inspire JJ to continue to try to reconcile with L. But even then, Smackjack at least did something for Seb. JJ does nothing to apologize or remediate the very nasty way she treated Elle earlier. And it was vicious. JJ, please don't leave. Please don't leave. Please don't leave. Because if you leave, I don't think you're going to come back. Please, JJ! No! 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 I think if there was a scene with Elle reflecting on what happened that gives insight into her willingness to forgive JJ, then we might be headed somewhere. The only thing that might give us a clue to her feelings is this pause. Anyway, I'm busy. 
But I feel like you have to read a lot into that to get that there might be some hope for this couple. As someone who loves love and gets giddy seeing gay couples out and about, this is really disappointing for me. If you're going to make a love can conquer all obstacles type of movie, I need to see the love working. And here the love happens essentially because the movie needs to end eventually. I think a high point of the film actually is JJ and Seb's friendship. As someone who has a handful of said friends, I get it. Their reconciliation, though brief, rings true to me because we've seen their friendship dramatized and we know they have that history. I fucked up, you fucked up, this isn't worth ending our relationship over, right? Cut it, move on, kiss kiss, hug hug. The love montage of JJ and Elle isn't enough for me to buy that they have a burning passion for each other to get together at the end of the movie without consequence. Had Campbell dramatized JJ and Elle's relationship, romantic relationship, the way that she did JJ and Seb's friendship, I think, you know, no complaints, we'd be great. But there is one scene that I think is really interesting. After JJ gets jumped, both Elle and Seb tend to her wounds, and Elle asks, Have you reported it? You're kidding, right? These are a bunch of racist wankers. Yeah? Uh, yeah. And if you don't report it, how are they supposed to build proper stats? Because JJ doesn't want to be part of their shitstorm. On the one hand, I think that it demonstrates uh, how Seb has a politic that feels rare for most white gays at this time, that is, to be critical and skeptical of the police. It also speaks to a queer politic of community protection and care. On the other hand, it isn't uncommon to see black people capitulate to authority in this way that Elle does, and plenty of black people who would make the same suggestion as Elle, but I don't know. Elle is also a sex worker. It feels like too much is going on in her life to be kind of pro-copy, but that is still plausible, and I think that's why this scene is most interesting in terms of characterization. I I sat up during the scene and thought, oh ho ho, this has potential. If this was generally how the film played, I'd have very few complaints. It's kind of unfortunate that this brief scene is the high point of the movie for me. I see the talent, I see the potential, but it wasn't fully realized. But don't get me wrong, the film is funny, it's entertaining, it moves well enough, I just wish there were more meat on the bones, as it were. I at least recommend giving it a shot. It's playing on Criterion Channel right now, so check it out. But that's it for today's episode. As a reminder, I am teaching for No Evil Eye Satellite Film School, Film Futura, later this year. Apply soon because applications end in early March, so don't miss this opportunity. Details are in the description below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. You know the drill. What's your favorite black gay love story? Your favorite lesbian film? Have you seen said life? What do you think? Sound off below. Love you all madly. See you on the next one.